Today in the Joy of Editing, we're going to take a look at a new filter that has been added to Nick Analog Effects, and that is the Paper Texture Filter. It's a welcome addition to Analog Effects. We're going to check it out coming up next. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'm so excited about this paper texture in Nick 8 Analog Effects. This is one that I've wanted in here for a long time. I think you're going to enjoy it, and we're going to look at it today. And here's a quick heads up. If you're thinking about Nick Collection 8 or any DxO software, you can grab 15% off new purchases with my code Dave Kelly. Links are in the description and you can try any app free first. If you use my links, I earn a small commission at no extra cost to you. Thanks for supporting the channel. And now let's go ahead and dive right into the paper texture filter here in Analog Effects, which is already opened. And you'll note, we always start out with a basic adjustment filter here. You can get rid of this by clicking the X if you want, but this is a good one to always have in place in case you need to make some minor adjustments on the image after adding a filter. A flower image like this with that nice soft background is a perfect candidate to add a texture. If we want to give this image a more painterly look, a texture is a great way to do it, and let's check it out. Now, if we look over at the left side of the interface, you can see our list of filters here, and we also have presets that we can use, but today I'll be using just the paper texture filter. Now, you can use any combination of these filters that you want. Now, unlike color effects, you can only have one instance of each one of these filters over on the right-hand side of the filter stack. I really love analog effects because it lets you get really creative with your images. If you want to take your image into a more artistic direction, analog effects is a great app to do that with. Or if you want to add an old vintage style look to an image, this is a good app to use to do that. If you want me to dig deeper into the different filters we have in analog effects, drop me a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. So let's go back to the left side where our filters are, and you're going to find paper textures right here. Just click the plus, and you'll note over here we've added that paper texture filter, and already we see we have a texture on here. Now let's look at our various options. Let's start out with blending. We have blend modes, and these are just popular blend modes for texturing images. It defaults with a multiply darkening blend mode. Let me click this drop down. You can hover over the different blend modes. This is what it would look like with a color blend mode, a darken, a hard light, a lighten, a multiply, an overlay, screen, and soft light. For me, my favorite blend modes are soft light, overlay, multiply, and sometimes hard light. But then we also have color, darken, lighten, and screen if needed. But it just pays just to hover over the different blend modes and find one you like. Let's start out here with multiply. And then under blending, we have a strength slider, which defaults at 100% to the right. Now you can move to the right with this default slider or to the left. 0% is in the center, so you can go from 100% to negative 100%. And I'll show you what that's all about here in a second, but let's look at some different textures. This is a drop down menu, and right now we're in the classic category of nine different textures, and we could click on any one of these textures, but if you click the drop down, you also have vintage textures. We have 12 textures in here. And then if you go to worn, we have nine textures in the worn category. But let's go back to classic. And then to change out the texture, just click on a texture. Let's click on this one. Okay, now let's talk about the strength slider. You see how these dots right here seem to be raised up? If I come to zero and shut off this texture, and now when I move it left of zero, you'll notice now those dots seem to be recessed in. So that's the way I like to kind of explain this. When you move the strength slider to the right, the image tends to look embossed. When you move it to the left, it tends to look recessed. Don't get all technical about this. Just move the slider to the right and see if you like that effect or move it to the left and see if you like that effect and choose the one that you like. For this image, I would move it to the right. Let's go up to 100%. Let's sample a few more of these out in classic. Here's another one. That's pretty cool. Here's another one. I like that one. Let's try this one. Okay, so these are all really cool paper textures, but let's find one we really like. I'm going to change the category. I'll click the drop down and we'll go and click on vintage. Now, I played around in here. There's some really cool ones. Let me click on this one. This one's really nice. And let's click on this one. 
And for this image, this is the one I ended up using, but we need to do some adjustments to make this look right. Now, of course, we could start out by pulling back on the strength. Now, remember, we're in the multiply blend mode, but let's leave it up at 100%. Let's try some different blend modes. So let's click the drop down for blending and let's hover over these blend modes and see if we find one we like. You know what? There's the multiply. Here's overlay. I like the overlay. It's a little strong, the effect. Let's try screen, which is a lightning blend mode. And then we have soft light, which is kind of like overlay, but more subtle. And I think this is the winner for me anyway. So I'll click on soft light. Light. And what I think I'll do is I think the strength is too strong. So let's pull back on the strength. Let's move it to the left. And I think maybe right about here looks really good. And I love this artistic look this image is taking on. It's almost getting more of a painterly look to it, which I really like. Now, if you don't want this effect on the overall image, you always have your local adjustments where you can remove it from certain areas and only apply it to other areas. But for this image, I like it everywhere because I think I'm getting a really nice painterly type look. I'll shut off the paper texture. Here's before and here's after, but see how that looks a lot more painterly. I really like it. Now there's a lot more we can do with this texture. So if we come right here, see this little cross right here. If you click and drag, you can move that texture around. You see that? So that's nice. So you can position it where you like it, where it looks best on the image. Maybe right about here looks pretty good. You can adjust the texture scale by moving this to the right to enlarge it or move it to the left to decrease the scale of the texture. So just adjust it accordingly to what looks right. And I think right about here. And then underneath scale, we have flip. So we can flip this horizontally by clicking this. See, we can flip it horizontally or we can flip it vertically. So we have a lot of different options here to get that texture looking just the way we want it. And I love all these extra features, but there's still more that we can do. And note right here, colorization, see the plus, give that a click. And now we can add a different tint to the image by adjusting the hue. You see that we can adjust the hue. So this is really cool, right? Maybe you want it warmer or whatever, maybe somewhere right around here. And then we have saturation. You can take the saturation off or build this up slowly and just add the right amount of extra tint you want on that image. Okay. Maybe somewhere right around here. And then you also have a luminance adjustment. Now we can move this to the right to lighten it or darken it. Now, depending on what blending mode you're in, the luminance may give you different reactions. In other words, when I move it to the right, you think it would get lighter, but it's actually changing the tint a little bit, but that's because I'm in the soft light blend mode. So the luminance will act differently according to what blend mode that you're in. Again, don't get too technical here. Just adjust these to get it to look the way you like it. And if you decide you don't want to use colorization, just click the negative and that shuts it off. So let me turn it on. Do I like it or don't I? Let me shut it off. I think I'm going to shut it off. I think I like it just the way it is. Once I get something dialed in, then I like to go around and try out some different textures. So let's try this texture. Interesting. This one. That's cool. Let me try this one. And let's try this one. That's pretty cool. And now let's change the category. Right now we're in vintage. Let's go to worn and try this one. Okay. Let's try this one. A lot of wrinkled paper here interesting way too strong i'd have to really pull back on that effect but that could look cool just that little bit of wrinkled paper looks pretty cool i'm going to turn this back up let's try one more again i'd have to pull this back but it takes a lot of playing let's go left of zero and see what we get okay that's kind of cool right about there you don't want to go overboard here i'm going to pull this back and let's go back to the vintage category and click back on the one i like this one right here and again let's adjust the strength again give it more give it less and i think i'll take it to like oh, maybe right about here 73 percent. let me shut this off here's before and here's after i really like the painterly effect maybe i'll just pull this back just a little bit to right there again before and after but that is paper textures now inside of analog effects and i really hope you give it a try i think you'll really enjoy it the only thing i wish they would add is the ability to add our own textures you know we're kind of limited on the textures that they give us but the textures they give us are all 
pretty darn good textures. But who knows, maybe the ability to add textures is coming in a future update. It's definitely needed if you're listening, TXO. Well, there it is, everyone. Paper textures now inside of Nick 8 Analog Effects. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click the bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.